Undoubtedly, Artemis II is the most significant national space mission for the United States in the coming year. After numerous delays, NASA has finally taken key steps to bring this mission closer to reality. However, challenges remain. NASA's vehicles continue to face critical issues that could impact the timeline. So what exactly are these problems? And of course, we can't talk about Artemis without discussing SpaceX, the company playing a pivotal role in the program's success. With uncertainties surrounding the space launch system, is SpaceX prepared to take on an even greater responsibility if necessary? Let's dive into these questions on today's episode of Great SpaceX. As we enter April, we are now just a year away from the highly anticipated Artemis II mission. This will mark a historic moment, the first time humans travel to lunar orbit since Apollo 17 in 1972, and the first crewed mission of the Artemis program. With the urgency surrounding NASA's lunar ambitions, there is little room for setbacks. To stay on schedule, the agency must finalize the production and integration of the mission's hardware without delays. Many have questioned whether NASA can meet this timeline, but the agency has recently taken a crucial step, arguably the most significant milestone in Artemis II preparations so far. Since mid-March, NASA has provided continuous updates on the SLS core stage, a key component of the rocket. The most critical update came on the 23rd of March when a massive crane lifted the core stage and, under the careful guidance of technicians, successfully integrated it with the two solid rocket boosters inside the vehicle assembly building at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. With this step, the basic formation of the SLS rocket was officially completed. To mark the achievement, NASA stated, milestone moment. Teams with NASA ground systems have completed the integration of the Artemis II core stage at NASA Kennedy. The SLS core stage will play a crucial role in sending four astronauts aboard NASA Orion on their journey around the moon. Accompanying images and videos released by NASA showcased the meticulous assembly process, underscoring the significance of this accomplishment. This milestone follows a series of rapid hardware preparations. In February, NASA efficiently stacked the 10 solid rocket booster segments, with each booster consisting of five segments. Shortly after, essential Orion spacecraft systems, including solar panels and the spacecraft adapter jettison fairing, were installed. Looking ahead, the next major milestones include attaching the cone to the core stage, installing the second stage, stacking the Orion spacecraft and other modules, and conducting an interim cryogenic test. However, the most critical achievement so far has been the integration of the SLS core stage and solid rocket boosters. Standing 65 meters tall, the core stage serves as the rocket's backbone, while the two 54-meter solid rocket boosters generate the majority of the thrust needed for launch. More significantly, this progress strongly suggests that NASA is moving forward with SLS for Artemis II, despite persistent speculation that the rocket could be removed from the program. For now, it appears the space launch system is still a critical part of NASA's lunar ambitions. Despite NASA's recent progress, significant challenges remain, particularly concerning the Orion spacecraft and the long-term viability of the SLS program. One of the most pressing concerns is Orion's heat shield. NASA is currently weighing two difficult choices, either reusing the old heat shield design, which comes with known risks but could help keep the mission on schedule, or developing a new, improved system, which would introduce further delays. The heat shield issue has been under investigation since Artemis 1, with NASA concluding its analysis late last year. However, the agency has chosen not to disclose the root cause of the problem, adding further uncertainty. Beyond the heat shield, Orion has still a long way to go before it is fully integrated with the SLS. Before reaching the vehicle assembly building for stacking, it must first undergo fueling and the installation of the Launch Abort System, or LAS, a process that took eight months during the Artemis 1 mission. We're already nearing April, and it's still speculative if any of the work has even begun. If it has just started, that means Orion will not be stacked on SLS until December at the earliest, leaving only a few months for crucial pre-launch testing, a time frame that is extremely tight, especially considering potential setbacks. 
Compounding these issues is the looming uncertainty surrounding the SLS program itself. The rocket has been plagued by high costs, slow production timelines, and concerns over hardware quality, leading many to speculate about its potential cancellation, especially as NASA transitions to a new administration. The financial burden of SLS is staggering. NASA spent over 10 billion US dollars developing the rocket for Artemis 1 with additional billions allocated for launch systems, contractor payments, and mission operations. Given the expanded scope of Artemis 2, there is little reason to expect costs to decrease. This raises concerns about the long-term sustainability of the program, especially as NASA shifts toward more cost-effective commercial alternatives like SpaceX's Starship. In terms of hardware reliability, major issues continue to emerge. A key example is the Exploration Upper Stage, or EUS, developed by Boeing for future SLS Block 1B missions. Despite its importance, the EUS has faced repeated delays and technical setbacks, highlighting broader concerns about Boeing's ability to deliver high-quality components on time. These ongoing struggles cast doubt on SLS's future, particularly given its already delayed timeline. Given these challenges, rumors of an SLS cancellation have intensified. Many insiders suggest that the likelihood of NASA phasing out the rocket is far greater than its retention. If SLS is ultimately scrapped, Orion could also be on the chopping block, given its numerous technical and cost-related issues. Thus, while recent advancements in Artemis II hardware may suggest forward momentum, they do little to mask the growing uncertainties surrounding SLS. Instead, they likely serve as confirmation that Artemis II will proceed as planned, but may mark the final mission for both SLS and Orion. Is Artemis II the last time we will see SLS and Orion in action? Let us know your thoughts by commenting yes or no down below. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's revolutionary progress in spaceflight. Now, for a program as crucial as returning humans to the moon, a more efficient, cost-effective, and rapid strategy is essential. This is where Starship, specifically the Starship Human Landing System, comes into play. Beginning with Artemis 3, Starship will take center stage in NASA's lunar ambitions, potentially marking a turning point in the Artemis program. Compared to the staggering cost per mission of the Space Launch System, Starship's fully reusable design represents the future of space exploration at a dramatically lower price. Reusability also enables an unprecedented flight cadence, with SpaceX already achieving a turnaround time of just 37 days between launches. As progress continues, this interval is expected to shrink even further, revolutionizing rapid deployment capabilities. Additionally, Starship's immense payload capacity far surpasses that of any other launch system enabling it to transport both crew and cargo in volumes unmatched by traditional rockets. This will be vital for sustaining a long-term lunar presence, especially as global competitors like China accelerate their own moon programs. Starship's versatility further strengthens its case. It can be repurposed into lunar bases or habitats, reducing the need for complex in-situ construction and infrastructure development. Despite its potential, Starship's journey has not been without challenges, and it continues to face significant hurdles as it prepares for its first lunar landing. While its progress has been remarkable compared to the sluggish development of NASA's SLS, major objectives remain unfulfilled. SpaceX has already made historic achievements, including successfully catching a super heavy booster using the Mechazilla arms and demonstrating controlled landings of both stages, a feat no other space organization has accomplished. However, with Artemis 3's scheduled launch just two years away, several key milestones must still be reached. One of the most pressing challenges is Starship's landing capability, particularly when it comes to safely catching the upper stage using the Mechazilla system. While SpaceX has made significant strides with Super Heavy, perfecting the landing of Starship itself presents an even greater challenge. 
although the moon landings will likely utilize a modified starship equipped with landing legs rather than relying on Megazilla, mastering Earth-based landings remains a critical step toward building confidence in the vehicle's overall reliability. Equally vital is the development of Starship's orbital refueling system, a technology that is essential for deep space operations including missions to both the moon and Mars. Establishing a reliable refueling infrastructure requires extensive preparation, including building the necessary support vehicles, perfecting docking maneuvers, and conducting multiple test flights. So far, SpaceX has not demonstrated any real progress in this area, raising concerns about whether a fully operational system will be ready in time for Artemis 3. Another major unknown is the status of the HLS prototype itself. SpaceX has yet to unveil a full-scale prototype or conduct any public demonstrations, leaving uncertainty about whether the system can complete the rigorous testing required to support an official lunar landing. The success of Artemis 3 hinges on Starship HLS being thoroughly tested and validated beforehand, as the mission cannot afford any major failures. Adding to those concerns are the unresolved issues surrounding Starship's second stage. The last two test flights, which introduced the new V2 version of the vehicle, both suffered failures at nearly the same phase of flight, sparking skepticism about whether the upgrades are reliable. For Starship to advance toward, in order for Starship to advance toward Artemis 3, SpaceX must first achieve a fully successful flight, proving that these modifications are sound and that the system is ready to take on more complex challenges. While Starship remains the most promising candidate for NASA's long-term lunar strategy, its path to success is far from certain. SpaceX must rapidly address these technical challenges, demonstrate key capabilities, and ensure that Starship HLS is fully flight-ready. With the clock ticking towards Artemis 3, the pressure is on to deliver results, and fast. The Artemis program's vehicles continue to face significant challenges. While SLS and Orion are making steady progress, their long-term viability looks increasingly uncertain. As the Artemis program advances into the most critical phases, the fate of these costly and complex systems may soon be decided. Meanwhile, Starship, despite its own hurdles, remains a beacon of potential. Its rapid development, reusability, and unmatched payload capacity position it as a game-changer for lunar exploration. If SpaceX can overcome key technical obstacles, Starship may once again prove to be NASA's most valuable asset in achieving its deep space ambitions. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.